to understand what the Enterprise Service Bus is all about, we have to understand a little bit about the evolutionary aspects and the roots of where the Enterprise Service Bus basically was coming from. So we think about some of our earlier implementation, we think about our customer and management types of systems, if we think about uh, the, uh, our ERP types of applications that we've had in the past, financial-based systems, and we think about how we had those particular pieces implemented in our legacy systems and our legacy aspects of things. That was generally, you know, we go back far enough, that's kind of the kind of environment that we had for a, a vast majority of time. And what we needed to do here is we needed to manage the routing of requests between these different systems, between these different application systems. So what we came up with and what was basically being deployed uh, back in the, uh, the early 90s was this concept of a message bus. And the message buses were proprietary. So different vendors were coming up with their own proprietary messaging environments. Uh, IBM had their MQ series, uh, Microsoft had its MSMQ, and a variety of other vendors were out there. And you created this proprietary system that you were able to link into. So you had an API uh, that you wrote, and through that particular API we gained access to this vendor-driven proprietary messaging bus system, which was fun. It did exactly what we wanted to do. We could take our messages and route them to a variety of different applications. We didn't have to worry about uh, the languaging aspects. Uh, all we had to do was put the uh, put it into a particular queue and a particular structure and the application would basically pick it up. The problem with this particular implementation of course is it's vendor specific so if I wanted to make any kind of adjustments, I wanted to make changes uh, then it caused me to go into my program to make those kinds of modifications. So what we needed was something that would allow us to more universally create messages that were not linked directly to the proprietary system. This is this web service descriptive language concept that we've been talking about, where now using XML, we can describe the interfaces that we might have to things like a messaging system. So the WSDL concept gives us a, a, a way to create a neutral way to describe information systems. Now once we got to this particular point, what we needed was a new layer on top of the proprietary messaging system, and that's where Java Messaging Services, or JMS, basically came into play. So JMS was the insulating piece that was built into the Java language to sit on top of the proprietary messaging environment, and through that particular environment, now we can, we can gain access to the messaging world, and now what we needed is a new type of a messaging structure, something that was not geared specifically towards the vendor's proprietary system and that's where simple object access protocol came from. So another XML derivative type here, another kind of an XML formatted message that we're using here. So the WSDL is the descriptor piece, describes what kind of service we're going to be accessing. So our legacy systems we could do this with, portal based applications, other programming environments like a .NET system we could do. We could tie into other uh, application systems from other vendors or suppliers in a business-to-business -business type of a concept. So as we got to this particular point in time, we began to see this need for controlling the routing of messages from one endpoint to another. So we had in place here the insulating aspects of JMS to insulate us from having to know and understand the physical uh, proprietary information in the messaging structure from the vendor and we had a new messaging uh, uh, type here called Simple Object Access Protocol to do the delivery. What we needed now was something to actually manage the routing and that's where the ESP is going to come from.